Hi, I'm Lynn Langett, and this is a five-minute preview of a talk that I'm going to be doing throughout the spring about the new data quality services in SQL Server 2012. So I'm going to give you a little preview. Um, next week, I'm going to be delivering this talk at the San Diego SQL BI user group, and I'll put a link in my blog at the end so maybe you can join me. I'll also be delivering the, the full talk up in Vancouver at DevTeach later in the spring and a few more times. So to give us get us started here, we're going to take a look at this new set of services in SQL Server 2012 called Data Quality Services. So as you may have heard, what this is, it's a set of tools and services that allow uh, people who have domain expertise around your data to work with uh, the people who control your data, so your DBAs, to improve the data quality. Um, the term that is most often used is something called data stewards, but also subject matter experts. So uh, data quality services physically is a client, server, metadata, and services. And logically, it's a set of knowledge bases and data quality projects. Now, if you drill in a little bit more deeply, you can see the architecture shown here is multiple databases with services sitting up on top, which probably isn't really meaningful with this new service. So let's, let's get a little bit more concrete here. So the first thing is that data quality services is not installed by default. So um, you would select it as an optional install. And after the installation would run, you have to run the data quality services installer um, to enable all the services to run. There's a couple other installation steps on the slide around permissions that you have to do. So um, you want to make sure and read all the documentation um, that comes with uh, SQL Server 2012. And then I'm showing them RC0 here. So the first thing that you'll see after you successfully run the installer, if you connect in SQL Server Management Studio, as I've shown you here, is that you'll have three new databases. So you can see the DQS main, and I'll drill in so you can see them really well here, DQS main, DQS projects, and DQS staging data. So those are the three holding areas. And as I mentioned, you're going to have to set the permissions so that whichever users are connecting can uh, read and write to those databases. There are some new roles, so if you want to have something other than administrators, so I'll open DQS main, and I'll show you inside of here that you've got some roles that are specific to the DQS server, which um, in a testing environment, of course, you can just use administrators, but you might want to use um, DQS administrator, DQS knowledge base editor, or DQS knowledge base operator if you want to assign someone with less than full administrative permissions to work with the interface. Now, once you go through all the installation steps, then you're going to launch the uh, DQS client. And I've done that here. And that's what this looks like. Now, inside of the DQS client, which is um, an installed application that runs on your machine, you have three different sections. You have the knowledge base management, the data quality projects, and the administration. Where you'll start is you will work with knowledge bases. Now, DQS includes a couple of sample knowledge bases. So uh, when you go to uh, create a new knowledge base, what you can do is you can work with some of the knowledge bases that um, are already included in the, pro in the product, and there are some samples out there that have other knowledge bases. So you can go to an existing knowledge base, for example, here, and this one is around geography information. So it's designed so that you can easily validate things like city names, country names, states, so on and so forth. So then what you do is you just give it um, a name, like my geography, and uh, fill in, you know, this is for me, and then you're going to create the knowledge from an existing knowledge base. So there's three different activities when you're creating a knowledge base. The first thing is giving more metadata or information about the domain. And as we drill in here, we'll see there's several sections there. The second is knowledge discovery, which matches um, additional information to the domain information. And the third is looking for duplicates, which is the matching policy. So let's drill into the domain management. So if we click Next, and as this renders here, it will offer uh, five different options for us to give metadata about the particular um, domain that we're working in. Now, while this is working, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the slides. I'm going to tell you that for more information about this, you're going to want to follow my blog at lynnlangit.com, follow me on Twitter at lynnlangit, and possibly attend some of the live presentations if, if you're available. So thank you for listening in.